Hey guys, Chip here, and today I want to talk about creating a composited scene using a photograph and 3D objects using a shadow catcher. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select everything X and delete it. So we start with a completely empty scene, which is always nice. Then let's just jump into Kit Ops, and I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to grab this box. And I created this box in another tutorial. So if you, uh, you can search my YouTube channel and find that. But here's, here's the box, and let's see, we'll let it, let it come in. And uh, that's what it looks like. So you can see it uses some kind of nice shaders and stuff like that. To look, it's all been created using Kit Ops in literally like two or three minutes. It's amazing how fast this thing came together. So anyway, you know, on Pexels, I found this image that I want to use. So I'm going to drag and drop that image in here. That's the image that I want. So I'm going to basically composite this on top of this image. That's that's the goal. So let's let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's delete this, delete that. But now the image is still stored in our scene and the first thing i want to do is let's go ahead and shift a we're going to add a camera and there's a camera and in the camera we want to use background images and i'm going to add the image and if you can see this pexels image is right here that shows that image and i want to basically say stretch is fine and then what i want to do is i want to set up my camera so it matches that image so how do we do that well let's just go under here and we'll go into the image editor and let's select our Pexels images image right there. And, you know, we can, you know, there's a couple ways we can do this, but uh, one is we hit the end panel and we say image and it'll give us the size right there. So with that done, I'll go back over here and in my render, I want to make sure I'm rendering cycles because uh, shadow catchers only work in cycles and there's a way to make them work in EV. And maybe that's another tutorial another day, but right now we're just going to do that. So. We've got that set up for cycles, uh, and let's go ahead and look at our resolution. So our resolution here is 4323, so let's go ahead and type that in. And then it's by 6485. Now that's a huge image, and so I wanna, I'm gonna, for my test printers, I'm gonna set it to 25%. So let's go back over now here into our 3D viewport. Hit the zero key on our numpads. So now we're in the camera view, and you can see that as we move around, that camera is facing kind of the wrong place. So I'm going to just basically, with this, I'm going to hit the G key, move it up about here, and hit the G key, just move it, just get it kind of roughly, and then hit, and then move it, you know, G up there. So then I'll hit the zero key. Now I can see it. So that's good. What I'll do is I'll go here under view, and I'll click this lock camera to view. And so that means that I can just move this in here. And if I click on this, I can rotate it. Now, if I, as I rotate it, you're going to see that we're not matching the perspective. Uh, and that's because the camera angle doesn't match. And there's a couple good add-ons out there, including one by Mark Kingsnorth. Perspective Plotter is the add-on I was mentioning by Mark Kingsnorth. This is a great little product that allows you to actually match your camera perspective to a picture. Works really good. And it's inspired by FSPY, which is a, a free product that can do the same thing, but it, it's not, doesn't, doesn't work directly inside of Blender. It's got an add-on and some other things, but this is a, Real easy thing to use, and uh, Mark's a great guy. So definitely check this out. I'll put a link in the description. So we're back in here. So I'm going to just kind of guess what this is. So I'm going to look at my camera, and I'm going to look at the field of view as 50. And sometimes you can look at the image, and you can you can get the field of, the correct field of view as well. But I'm going to just basically guess it's like 35. So I'm going to set it at 35 there. And then when I move it up and down, you see that what happens is, let me lock this down. You can see that. This is vertical, but this isn't. And uh, so our perspective is not actually, you know, it's not matching very well because of this verticality issue. Now, typically when someone's doing a photograph inside a room like this one, what they'll find out is that these verticals are always going to go to a third vanishing point up top. So they're not going to be straight. So they have to use something called a tilt shift lens to get that to work straight. And you can do the same thing in Blender. So let's go back into the camera. And while we're in the background image, let's make sure that we put this opacity to one so we can kind of see exactly the exact background image that we're going to be working with. Now, uh, what I can do now is this shift Y. I can move this shift Y down and then move this up. And you can see now we've got it so that we're, now we've got so that, that we have these things vertical. So we've got these vertical and they're kind of matching, you know, maybe let's create a plane, shift eight mesh plane, and we'll scale that out like this. And as I move it up, you can see 
how well it matches the perspective. And it's not particularly great. I mean, that right there, you can see. So so that's another way that if you want to kind of cheat it, you just go into camera again. We're going to maybe, maybe go 30. It's kind of matching the perspective a little better. And I can just, you know, again, with making sure that my view is set to camera, I can, whatever I click on is going to move up here. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to this plane and I'm going to set it at zero so that it's actually sitting in the bottom. And you can see that there's a, maybe a, a little shadow there, but there's not really because we don't have any lights yet, right? All we have is this EV viewport shading set right now. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a environment map to map onto this image. So let's, let's talk about that a second. Now what I want to do is I want to create some lighting for this. So let's take this plane. I'm going to just turn it off. What I'll do is I'll go into our world and I am going to open up my shader editor. I'll go into world and I'm going to create a new map right here. And then with this set over here, I'm going to go over here and make sure that I'm working inside of cycles and with node wrangler enabled from the preferences, it's an add on. I'm going to hit this and now I've got this environment texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down. This is a bit of a cheat, but what I'm doing is I've added this pexels image as my HDRI. Now it's not a full HDRI and it's not going to do a great job lighting the scene, but what it will do, is it'll contribute to the color of the scene. So if I make this strength, let's say make it like two, and you can see already that the background is starting to contribute to the color of the scene. If I go back to my EV settings and I just click over here to scene lights, scene world, and now I can rotate this image. So I want the lighting, as you can see, the lighting is coming from this direction. So I want to rotate this image so that lighting is coming from there. And you can kind of see what's going on with it. You see the little highlights there? So that's that's kind of lining it up. Now, again, I'm not going to use this as any kind of primary lighting, but what it does do is it provides some color contribution to the scene. Let's add some lighting. And to do that, I just, it's kind of what I always do when I want to do lighting. I just divide this in half here and I under, I'll say view, view area, toggle quad view. And then I'll just Z and go into a wireframe view and hide that. So now I can see what's going on and I can say shift a mesh or, or shift a, let's, let's add a light an area light above and I'll move it over here maybe and rotate it R. So I'm going to rotate this way, maybe here, rotate it maybe this way. And let's look at that light. Let's give it maybe 500. So now we can see that lights coming in from that direction and let's make the size and let's give it a bigger, a larger size. We're going to get a lot of bounce lighting in here. So that's why I made it, we didn't make it a thousand. Let's make it a thousand. Okay. And then I'm going to basically duplicate that shift P move it over here. And then let's rotate it this way. I'm going to put it kind of on the opposite side here, like so. So that's really kind of what we have. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn our plane back on so I can see what it, it's doing and see if I've got much in the way of shadows and I might be getting too much. Let's, let's, let's maybe make this instead of 10. Let's make it five. This other one, five and this one, five, two. Okay. So that may be, you know, that may be kind of close to what we want, something like that. So now we have our object sitting here in the scene with the shadow catcher and we can see the shadows that are coming in and I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, eh, might be a little too strong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go back into my world and I'm going to jack this down to maybe one. And that's going to darken things just a little bit. It still keeps the color, uh, uh, some of the color contribution. Then what I want is I want this material here to be the same material as we see over here, which is a uh, concrete material. And so we'll go back into the object here. And I'm going to add this concrete that is part of the EV materials kit. It's just, you know, I'll just take this concrete plane and I'll add that material to here. And what that does is it's kind of trying to match this other material. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here into the properties for this. And under visibility, we're going to turn on shadow catcher. Now you get this and this is kind of crazy. Not sure why that's going on. Well, that's because over here in our, our camera properties for cycles, we want to go in and film. We want to make this transparent. And once we do that, now we see that we have a nice shadow sitting directly on that particular surface. 
And, you know, it looks like the, 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 everything matches pretty well. Now I can just render this, but then I'm going to need to actually add some compositing. So with this set, remember we had this thing rendering at 25%. I'm going to go ahead and do a real quick render. And there you can see the render uh, of that particular object. So I'm going to close this and I'll go into compositing. And we have this compositing set up. And you can see in the bottom, I have this set to render result. And up here, I want to set this to backdrop so I can see what's going on in here. And I want to say use nodes. So we need a shift A. Let's search for a viewer node. And then I'll drag this to here. And now we have the viewer node. And now you can see that that you know you can see that we have the image in here as well as in here. So I'm going to grab the shift key and drag across here, and it's going to make these into one. So I'm going to show you what I do now. Now you're, we're going to need to composite that other image on there. So I'll say shift A, and we're going to do under input, we want to find image. There it is. And then we're going to pull that uh, pixels image in there, and that's it. And then we want to shift A, and we're going to find color, and we want to mix, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to mix these two images together, one on top of the other, and we're going to use the and we're going to use the alpha channel to cut the mat for us. Now you can see we need to swap these up. So now that we've got it. And there it is. But the problem is, as you can see, is this image is way too big. So what do we do? Well, we shift A and we look, search for something called a transform. And if you recall, that image was uh, originally quite large and we scaled it by uh, by a quarter. So I'm going to put point two five here. And now you can see that our image is looking much, much better. So that's a good start. So I'm going to go through and add a few compositing tweaks to this. So first, I'm going to say Shift A, and I'm going to look for color, and I'm going to add a RB curves, and I want to put that before this. And I want to basically darken this just a tad. I just want to get a little darker than this. This up. So this sits in front just a little bit, and then I'm going to take this and say uh, D and move it over here. So right after this, we have this. And I'm going to punch both a little bit like that. So that's now I'm working in, I think it's what 16 bit or maybe even 32 bit space. I'm, I'm not sure what, but so you can add, add these kind of image manipulations all you want for this kind of thing. So now that we have that done, what I'm going to do is look through here. See, is, is this, is this look about right? It does look pretty good. I might want to add some depth of field to that later. We might, we might jump in there and do that, but first let's add a little bloom. So I'm going to say if a, and I'm going to go under filter and I'll say glare and I'll drop that right in here and it's going to take a while to calculate this. You can see down here compositing. It's taking a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image and I am going to put it directly into this spot right here. That means we get by all this other stuff and now this glare will go pretty fast. So as, as you can see, Let's go back in here. Say, view. Let's do a fit. Uh, let's do a reset backdrop. Okay. So that's yeah. So we'll then move. Okay. So you can see what's going on there. This is a kind of streaks. We don't want streaks. We want a fog glow. And now, how we do this is we'll take this threshold or this mix and we'll move it all the way to one, and that shows you what's going to be highlighted here. And then we'll take the threshold and we'll start changing that dragging it down a little bit to see this is this is the part that's going to get the glow. So maybe we'll go something like this. And then we can take this and put it back to zero to see if we like that glow. And we can actually move it back a little bit. Minus one means no glow at all. So I might make it to like like this. I get a little bit of, uh, of a glow here, but not too much of a glow. So there's that. Okay, now that we have that done, the next thing I want to do is I want to deal with the color balance. So to do, fix that, I'm going to come back here put this in here. Now that we have our glow set up, this will this will render out. And what I'm going to do is add some color balance in here. So shift A, color, color balance, and I'll drop that right in there. And typically I'll probably add a little blue here, a little green here, and a little yellow here. And we'll see down here how that works. Let's see. There you go. You see what happened. So you can see that it went there. So I'm going to go composite, a few layers. So that oops, combined. Composite. There you go. So that's what it is. Let's add a little bit of green. Maybe that's too much. Control space part to get back out of there. Maybe I'll, I'll push this a little bit over to the yellow side a little more. 
Yeah, yeah, it bumps it up. Uh, yeah. So let's just go with that. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to actually add a little film grain to this. So before we do that, let's go ahead and let's jump back in here and let's do uh, some depth of field. So I'll go to my camera here and I'll go to camera. We'll scroll down and we'll turn on depth of field. And I'm going to click on this little icon and I'll hit it right there. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to turn this off, make the distance uh, zero, make the f-stop 0.1. So you have something really tiny. And then just move the distance up. And as you're moving the distance, you're going to start to see this thing coming into focus. As I'm dragging forward, you'll see. And then it goes out of focus. So when I, I get it into the place I want focus, which is probably right about there, is pretty good. And then I can change the f-stop. So I'll maybe make this like 5.8 or something like that. So now I've got a little bit of edge around stuff, but not too much. So that's, that's nice. So go back in. So now we'll basically do another rendering. And there's our rendering with our composite with the depth of field. Close that. Let's go back into compositing. And now the thing I want to add is some film grain. So to do that, I'll go over here in this texture mode. And I'm going to say, let's create a new texture. Let's call it uh, film grain or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to make it a type is going to be noise. And then we'll come up over here. And I'm going to say shift a input texture. And we'll go film grain. And there it is. So there's the film grain. If I control shift here with no Wrangler installed, you'll see that's what it looks like, right? So now I can come back here and hook it up like that. So uh, with this done, uh, next thing I want to do is I want to blur this texture. So that, that, that texture is a little harsh. So I'm going to shift A and I'm going to filter and I'll say blur. And I'll move that here. And I want to use a fast Gaussian blur and I want to set it at two. And I'll put this value into this image. And with this, then I'll grab this mix. Remember this mix RGB and uh, shift D to duplicate it. I'm going to stick it over here. Let's move these guys over. And I want this to go, let's put it into the top maybe, and this into the bottom. And we're going to set this to color dodge. So, and then I'm going to hook to here. And we'll set that, like, give it a second to run in. And you'll see that we're going to add a lot of film grain. And you can kind of see now as we zoom in, there is a lot more film on this on this image than was. But I, I'll, I'll go to I'll knock it out by half. And then before I even add that, I also want to add a lens distortion. So let's go search lens. I just happen to know that the numbers I like here is dispersion 0 0.01. And that's going to give us a little bit of, of, uh, of uh, stuff around the edges. You notice the composite. So when it hits, that this is going to change just a little bit. So you see, it's a little bit fuzzier. Works works kind of nicely. So, so that's it. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to save what I got, power save, and then I'm going to go over here. And as you recall, in our compositing tab over here, we have the scales 0.25. So let's make this 0.25, and let's go to our render, and let's make it instead of 25, let's make it 50 percent, and then. Let F12 and let's let this thing render. So here's our final render. You can see it's, you know, even at, at one to one scale, it looks pretty good, right? So, uh, and it fits nicely inside this room. You can see that that looks like it's, it's uh, aligned correctly. So hopefully this has uh, been a helpful tutorial for you guys. And uh, shoot me a question over on Discord if you, if you want, if you have any thoughts about how you might want to improve this. And, uh, that's about it for now. We'll see you online. Bye.